There is a man in Wimbledon who will go on adding to his equipment until he can hear the sigh of the conductor as the piccolo misses its entry. Do they like music or are they in love with equipment? Is it all for the love of a crossover unit? Is it a soft spot for a tweeter that holds these faces in thrall? mesmerized by a feedback circuit. No bibliophile handles a rare binding more tenderly. But it's no good coming in if you don't speak the language. I have a 12 inch space unit. I'd like to buy a tree box tweeter, please. Yes, sir, I have one in stock. Could I one? Yes, sir, there's a tree box tweeter. That would cost £6.4. To go with that, of course, you'll, you'll need a crossover unit, which crosses over at 5,000 cycles and enables you to give the correct registers to the appropriate speaker. Oh, well, of course, that, that is uh, no good to you at all. You must have one of these better class units, which has uh, ultra linear output stages. The distortion factor on it is very, very low indeed. Uh, somewhere in the region of 0.1, 1% at 10 watts output. That will be £6.4, two guineas, £1.4 and six, £1.3 and six, which gives you £10.14 and seven shillings, £11.1 one shillings. Worth every penny. Record shops have turned into glossy cathedrals. See how the assistants have become church wardens. To every worshipper, a stall. Then down past a mosaic of shining record covers to join the mysterious ritual. and different recordings of every work, how do we find the best? Rely on the critic. Nothing escapes him. Comparisons are odious, but inevitable. What are we to make of this version, for example, by Norki and the Albionia on BEP 709? The string tone is thin and boxy. There's faint background rumble, and the woodwind section seems strangely out of focus. John Terps, on the other hand, has given us a rather dapper account of the symphony on XZLP 4137. I fear the engineers have picked up a trifle too much resonance so that fortissimos ring round the room, building up mush. But it's a glowing account of the symphony nonetheless, and very different from Norky's interpretation. <laughs> ... 
The Wurzburg Symphoniker and a Zeugmar make Beethoven's call of fate in a rather more tentative way on RB 21495Q. On this pressing there was a suspicion of pre-echo. The recording gets shrill and coarse at moments of tension and Zeugmar makes a little too much play with his wind. But on balance this is a splendidly alive and exciting performance. What an ear. Is it a religion or a disease? An American psychiatrist calls it audiophilia. And now, stereo, three-dimensional sound, the biggest contribution to music since Sir Barnum and Bailey. A quiet evening with friends. And the new equipment. Hold it. Yes, sir. Quiet. This is Stereo, three-dimensional reality. With Stereo, an express train roars through your living room. Emergency! And with Stereo, you are there. Or you can witness a thrilling game of ping pong. Yes, great music can ring in your ears as fresh and majestic as it rang in the mind of the composer at the moment of its creation. A dream, a dream of perfection, of images larger than life. Of machines more sensitive than the ears they play to. <laughs> 